how quickly do you think all of these guys are going to end up like signing somewhere once free agency starts? Like, are, are a lot of these teams waiting for that Brady domino to fall, or like, do a lot of them know, like, okay, we don't have, we're, we're not going to get Brady. We need to kind of decide who we're going to go after. Everybody is waiting for Tom Brady. I think everybody's reporting that. If you have a chance to get Tom Brady, you're going to try to get Tom Brady. Then after that, all the other. So whenever I went into free agency, I was going to go into free agency. There was two other punters that were about to be free agents. I got texts from them. I'd never talked to them before. They're like, hey, what are you thinking? Because where you ever you go is kind of setting the tone for me. Now, I, I viewed that as a massive compliment. I was very thankful for that. But that's how free agency goes. And I would assume a lot of these quarterbacks, if they're friends with Tom Brady or potentially talking to Tom mm-hmm. Brady, mm-hmm. like, hey, excuse me, is there any way you can give me a heads up? And Tom's probably telling them absolutely nothing because that's good business. But everybody's waiting on that Tom Brady move to happen. Once he goes wherever he goes, if it's to the Niners, which – that would be insane. If it's to the Titans, now where's Tannehill going to go? Tannehill is going to potentially end up as a starter somewhere if he plays football anywhere like he did last year. Maybe Tannehill bumps somebody else out of a spot. You're going to have very good quarterbacks potentially playing backup quarterback next year. And that is a good thing for the NFL, bad thing for a lot of these quarterbacks, that this free agency period is about to be absolute frenzy. Who do you think is the biggest domino? Say, So Tom gets signed somewhere. And then Dak gets franchised. Of these quarterbacks, who do you think is the next quarterback that is sought out, like is the next domino there? It's got to be Teddy. That's what I was thinking, In too. my eyes, it's got to be Teddy Bridgewater. Just because Teddy was able to win in Drew Brees' offense. And Drew Brees' system was built. Sean Payton and Drew Brees have been a hell of a tag team. Hell of a tag team. I don't, I don't know if deep down Sean Payton wanted Drew Brees to come back or he wanted to move forward with somebody else, but that offense has been successful for a long time, and it's completely revolved around Drew Brees. I don't know anything about Drew Brees other than when he was on our show, he's a gentleman, he punked Ty Schmidt. <laughs> I don't know anything else about Drew Brees, but I do know that if he's anything like Payton or anything like any these other quarterbacks, the backup quarterback's not getting a lot of reps in practice. The backup quarterback, it's not, it doesn't, like, hey, we appreciate that you're here, you'll go in and play good football if you need it, but we are banking on our warrior, our gladiator, Drew Brees playing, and you just kind of got to fit in how you get in. And I think that is the um, the thing that was so impressive with Teddy is the ability to win with a system that was nowhere near based around his strengths. Mm-hmm. Now, Latavius Murray stepped up and played great football for the Saints, but I think Teddy Bridgewater is obviously going to be highly sought after. If Alex Smith is healthy, Alex Smith was an MVP football player just a couple years ago. Now, that injury was... Mm-hmm disgusting mm, and gross, I don't, gross i don't know how you come back i rolled my ankle a couple weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> and i can barely come back so sorry to interrupt if you're a man watching this you deserve to have long great sex and you can do that now with our friends at roman right now you go to getroman.com, you get ten dollars off and free two-day shipping on roman swipes which are guaranteed to make you have longer more fulfilling sex every time you get in the sack now let's get back to the fornicate in action but with modern technology and the amount of millions and millions that he has, I mean, there's a chance that he's back. I mean, it's just Philip Rivers. I mean, if he still wants to play, if he doesn't want to retire in Florida with his 90 kids, I mean, there's just there is a a treasure trove of quarterbacks right now that need homes, and there's not enough places for them to potentially go. Who are the Chargers going to sign? Nobody knows. They got Tyrod Taylor. Is Tyrod Taylor going to be a starter again? Last time he was a real starter for the Buffalo Bills, made him to the playoffs. Bills didn't make the playoffs for like 45 years mm-hmm. before that. I mean, it's just there are so many good quarterbacks out there and not a lot of homes, only 32 teams. And I don't know how everybody's going to get the money. I don't know who's <laughs> going to get money. I don't know how the money's going to spread. And I think everybody is sitting in their little war rooms just like drawing up like the – the, the police sketch where you're connecting everybody. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, if Tom goes here, then we can potentially move this guy <laughs> up and we can do this. And then they also have to worry about the draft. Correct. And then there's Air Bear. There's the love guy who threw 14 interceptions. But you talk to his uh, Jordan Palmer who's training him right now. He's like, he was on a bad team. They're forcing him to make plays. If he didn't make any plays, they were going to lose games. So he was throwing things places he shouldn't throw them. I mean, there's just so much going on in the quarterback market. That kind of sets it for everything else that's going on. It's all going to be a domino after that. I'm just chomping at the bit. Like I just want it to start. And by the like, way, can't pay. I want can't it to pay, end. Can't, <laughs> <laughs> can't pay any other free agents until you pay your quarterback. Right. Yeah. Because that sets the market. Mm-hmm. That then you know exactly what your salary cap is. So basically, every free agent right now is being held hostage by Tom Brady. <laughs> and then after Tom Brady, it's like okay, 
after him. Now we got all these other quarterbacks that we have to figure out first. And then you guys, yeah, you're a great tight end. Yeah, you're a great running back. Yeah, you're a great offensive lineman, D lineman, all that. We appreciate everything, but we have no idea how much money we have because if we can get Tom Brady, we're we're, we're going to get Tom Brady, mm-hmm. and that might mean we can't sign you, pal. So you might have to go somewhere else. And now they got the extended period there, the two days of uh, tampering or whatever, the 48-hour tampering period. That is going to be lit. I mean, that is going to be an exciting time if you're Schefter, if you're Florio, if you're any of these insiders that are getting information. That two-day tampering period is going to be a lot of, boom, these teams are lying about potentially signing this person. This team's lying. These people are spinning. Those 48 hours are going to be hot on the phones. I'm the, excited for it. The Niners coming in hot here obviously changes things a little bit, but do you think Brady deep down knows where he's going or yes. where he wants to go? Yeah. yeah, yeah, Tom knows. Tom knows what he wants to do. Tom knows what he wants to do, I think. Now, granted, he probably has a price and in his mind that he wants to get paid. He has a situation he wants to go to. I would assume in his eyes he's already figured it out. And I would assume, even though the NFL can't say it and his agents won't say it and he won't say it, I would assume there's already conversations happening with the teams that he's looking mm-hmm. to go to, right? I mean, that that's just – I mean, we can't be that naive to think that that's not happening. Right. But I think Tom knows what he wants to do. 